Morning all, welcome. Um, good to see such a, a full room. Uh, it was a bit of a surprise uh, this morning. I don't think we catch trains to places that we're not used to going quite so much as we used to. So it was all a bit, a bit weird being on a weird train to a weird place at a weird time in the morning. So um, anyway, not sitting at home this morning, actually out meeting people, so hello. Um, so I'm going to do uh, 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 about 20 minutes. Um, we're, we're at Zuna. We had explained kind of what we are and what we do. Um, we're not really going to talk about the, the job postings, which we'd love to carry from all of you, and we do carry from some of you already, but more to give a little bit of an insight to some of the uh, market trends that we're seeing uh, and give a little bit of a kind of context and a flavour to the rest of the day where you've got a few more of your kind of um, peer colleagues kind of talking about some of the issues and challenges that they've tackled. So we're hopefully going to give um, a little bit of uh, context to where we are um, currently in sort of early 2023. Um, this is a little bit about us. Our aim is to basically carry every job everywhere. It's quite a bold and uh, challenging uh, attempt. Um, but as um, as was just said, we've had up to about 1.3, 1.4 million jobs, uh, certainly in the bounce back from COVID. Now kind of nearer a million at the moment, but still we feel we... Uh, get just about every job everywhere or at least as close as anyone so that's our kind of aim for the candidate is to make sure there's a one uh, a one-stop shop they can find all the jobs um, in terms of what we do and who we kind of work with um, we've got a range of different channels that we uh, would use on on your behalf to get your jobs out to market and then there's a range of clients on this side that we work with the big job boards were our first big clients kind of 10 years ago and we still work with them every month and carry the vast vast majority of their jobs Jobs there using us to promote and probably send you traffic from that so that's the arrangement that we we started with as an aggregator and now we're starting to work much more closely with a number of direct brands corporate brands who are looking to kind of short circuit that process and say I'll have the candidate straight to me if you don't mind uh, and that's part of the reason for being here today is to kind of let you know that that's what we do and we, we might be able to talk more about that just in terms of where we sit in things we are uh, very very uh, clearly we're at the the attraction application stage of the recruitment funnel i'm sure in the course of the conversations that we'll all be having today there'll be a load of um, challenges much further down the funnel maybe even beyond into retention and, and challenges like that so just to be clear as to where we feel we've got some expertise it's right at the top of that but clearly that the quality or the, the volume that you get from the attraction filters down to other challenges further down so hopefully we can we, we can help um, involve ourselves in some conversations but that's that's where our expertise lies and just in terms of what we uh, tend to work on best and hopefully the majority of you in this room will look at that and think okay yeah there's something up there that relates to me because you're a, a volume hiring session um, it's the kind of the big backbone roles with lots of transferable skills lots of candidates lots of roles that that's where we tend to uh, work best and work with some of those bigger brands that you, you saw up there a second ago um, as mentioned uh, we've got more jobs than anyone else in the UK. Uh, it varies, obviously, depending on, on, on seasons and where we are in, in the economic cycle. But as a general rule, we have a million plus. Indeed has about 500,000 jobs and the big job boards have about 250 each as a, as a general broad rule of thumb. Um, so we do feel we're, we're, it's legitimate for us to say we kind of carry all the jobs in the UK. Um, so we did a similar presentation to this in Birmingham at the event at the end of February. Um, and uh, took a bit of a look at wh where we were in, in the cycle of things. And actually, um, having dusted that off a couple of weeks ago to think about this, things actually felt a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, uh, challenging in February. We were kind of coming off the back of tech layoffs, uh, the great resignation, quiet quitting. These were all the sorts of topics that were definitely doing the rounds. I, I don't think they've all gone away, but certainly in the last couple of months, some of the, uh, the coverage that we've seen, we've got a, a media PR team who are kind of blogging quite often about topics that are, are relevant in the, uh, in the recruitment space. I wouldn't say there's a, a huge recovery on and everyone's bounced back and it's, it's, you know, harvest time, but it feels like that slightly lurching sense at the start of the year that everyone was a bit like, I'm not quite sure where this is going to go, has sort of flattened out and we're kind of in a place now where it's like, okay, this isn't the greatest market in the world, but it feels like it's kind of stabilised and we might kind of be able to do, make some plans for through the summer and into the autumn. That kind of where I feel uh, things have, have broadly got to. Um, so I'm just going to take you through some of the data that we've got from having approximately a million jobs on the site at all times around the job numbers and the salaries and what candidates are searching for just to give you a bit of a snapshot of what's what we're seeing happening in the market at the moment so 
This goes all the way back to 2019. Um, but this is job numbers, demand and interest. Don't worry, that's from a, a particular uh, search facility we have on our, uh, on our data site, demand and interest. But that's job numbers that we've seen. So you can probably spot where COVID happens and you can probably spot where the recovery was. Um, Broadly speaking, and the reason I've gone back to 2019 is 2019 was the last normal year before all this happened. Um, and the job numbers, obviously there's always a bit of fluctuation, but the job numbers then are kind of the job numbers we've now seen for the last eight or nine months. We're almost back to that kind of level with a bit of up and down. So the, the massive drop off, the kind of roller coaster dip and then, the, and then the recovery, you can quite clearly see. But it feels again like we're sort of back to something approaching a kind of an equilibrium with where the world was back in the normal times. So I think that's, that's an interesting starting point. In terms of the job volumes per month, um, we did see at the start of last year, sort of first quarter, second quarter of 2022, there, there were a lot of jobs. It was, it, it was kind of real sort of boom times. We've definitely seen that slide away and as I said at the start of this year it felt a little bit challenging for a couple of weeks like the job numbers were really thin on the ground. Um, things have picked back up, April was a little bit of a, a downturn but I think Easter may have played a little bit of a part in that because it kind of knocked the first two weeks of April. But I've put the average number of monthly jobs we had all the way through 19, 2017, 2018 and 2019 and basically March was back to the same numbers of jobs that we saw on average throughout those three whole years. So again, in terms of just getting a finger in the air as to where are we in the big scheme of things, it feels like we're somewhere back to where we were. It sometimes feels like we're a bit behind that because we got used to a huge peak last year. But actually, if you take it sort of historically, we're, we're kind of back on the level. One of the the challenges, and I sort of referred to it there, I got a bit ahead of myself. One of the, the problems with it was the, the number of jobs fell off really quickly at the sort of about this time last year. We'd seen quite a lot of jobs and then it, it fell away. And so the almost the, the, the sort of the relative effect of there having been quite a lot of jobs very recently and then there being far fewer jobs literally a couple of months later gave that sort of lurching feeling. So it's felt worse perhaps over the last eight, nine months than it is. It's actually more to do with how... how how quickly ago, how soon ago, uh, we had a historically high number of jobs and sort of the return to normal feels a little bit, a uh, bit lurchy. Now, this is a little bit complicated, but I think it's quite interesting. So I'm going to talk you through it. The green line, which runs through the middle, is the number of jobs. Uh, the little dip in the middle of all of them is Christmas of every year. So it makes it complicated because I'm talking from 18 to 19 or 19 to 20. But the dip is Christmas. The green line through the middle is the average number of jobs we saw in 2017, 18 and 19 through Christmas and into the new year. The yellow line is coming out of COVID. So that kind of October through to Christmas of COVID and a slight recovery. The red line is last year when we, it was sort of boom times. So massive amounts of jobs. Um, the blue line is basically what we're seeing, what we've seen in the last six months. So we are almost, I mean, it sort of made me chuckle a bit when I did this, we're almost pound for pound exactly where we were right back in 17, 18 and 19 through that whole Christmas down and up. We're, we're almost kind of literally uh, sketching exactly the same drawing. The, 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 the dip is basically the COVID year. So that obviously kind of hit at the middle of March and we saw those jobs tail away and I kind of put that in as a bit of a marker to show it felt a little bit dodgy uh, in sort of January, February of this year. But compared to what happened in March and April of 2020, it was, it was nothing. That, that, that's, <laughs> that's jobs falling away. What we felt was kind of just a natural, uh, I suppose, um, 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 bit of variation. So again, different ways of looking at it, but it feels like we're kind of back to some sort of a level. Um, the thing that is playing, obviously, into this, and, and I'm sure you will all be feeling it, and it isn't just being driven by the job market. Obviously, there's, there's other factors at play economically, but is the, is the salaries. So clearly, if you've got a million jobs on the site at any one time, we've got a fairly good barometer of what the kind of the average salary in the UK is being uh, asked for at the moment or being, sorry, promoted. And again, it really, to, to see something kind of increase that much over such a short space of time is not normal. Um, but again, it's not like we haven't seen salary increases similar to that over the last six, seven years. I've got another slide in a minute that this does happen from time to time and it tends to be um, fairly uh, steep when, when it comes. Um, but th this is definitely a factor that's playing in at the moment. Uh, and I'm sure all of you are dealing with some of those challenges and it might be uh, something that gets talked about later. In terms of the candidates, so clearly 
we monitor uh, candidates coming on and searching on the site. So this is daily searches going back over the last sort of six, nine months. I think it's fair to say this end near me, which is the start of this year, that line is operating at a slightly higher level than last year. So that just indicates that there are more searches going through Adzuna than there were during the back end of last year, which again feels about right. It feels like there's more activity from candidates, perhaps because of all the things going on, there's more candidates out of work or more candidates looking to move. But it definitely feels like there's a bit more candidate activity as well as the higher salaries. Um, and we work, um, uh, we, we run Find a Job for the government, the, 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 what used to be the, um, uh, the government website. Um, so we, we have a tracker that kind of looks at how many uh, people are on universal credit against the number of jobs that are in the market. So we can give it, I mean, it's not, it's not uh, gospel, but it is one measure of how many job seekers there are versus how many vacancies in, in, in the UK. And again, that kind of ratio between the number of job seekers and the number of vacancies has been on the rise steadily throughout the last nine to ten months. Um, so I think um, that gives a, a reasonable picture of kind of what we've seen on the sort of macro level across jobs and salaries and, and what candidates are, are, are doing. Um, so this is kind of summing up all that I've um, uh, sort of run through. So this is uh, salaries and job numbers combined over the last six years. Um, so again, as, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we, we have seen quite, quite high salary increases, sort of three or four times over the last five or six years, and they tend to, tend to go up in quite a steepling fashion and then, and then um, uh, uh, sort of level out. We're in the midst of one of those rises now. I don't know, I can't tell you where that's going to go and where it's going to stop, but it's not, it's, this isn't the first time it's happened. It's definitely a, a feature of what you're all dealing with at the moment, but it, it, it's not kind of without, um, without precedent. Um, and then again, in terms of the job numbers, I was saying to someone yesterday, really, in a funny way, if you took the top off that, that COVID recovery and flipped it back into the hole, you, you'd sort of end up with, with, things would have kind of bobbed along about normal for the last six years. The, the number of jobs doesn't really seem to have drastically changed. It's just that the pattern shifted and, and, and there was a hollowing out which got followed by a recovery, broadly speaking. Um, and it feels now that we're kind of back to some sort of equilibrium. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea as to what we've seen on the macro level and puts it in a bit of context. The other thing then that's playing into this obviously is candidate demands and I think if we're saying broadly the job numbers and some of the metrics are sort of where we were in 2019, I think one of the things that has changed is that candidates' expectations and demands in 2023 have shifted on from where they were in 2019 and I think some of that is partly down to asking people to have to change their way of working and their kind of almost their contract, not their legal contract, but the, you know, the, the, the psychological contract with employers and they're coming back now and being a little bit more demanding and got higher expectations perhaps as we come out the back of, uh, of COVID. Um, so, um, uh, as I said, we've got a media team who kind of uh, look and run stories and do some uh, data mining. Uh, I've got links to some of the blogs that I'm going to refer to here that we'll send out to you so you can, you can go and find out more. But in terms of a few sort of headlines around candidates and, and expectations and demands, um, the, the uh, one way of looking at this is to kind of take Generation uh, Z. I know that um, sometimes I read them and think, oh, Generation Z taking the blame for everything again. Uh, oh, here they are with all their demands. But th they are obviously um, a, 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 a a cohort coming through the system who do have a different uh, set of objectives and I think it's, it's sometimes interesting to try and understand what they're asking for. I'm not from Generation Z but certainly some of the things around flexibility and what have you, I'll go along with that if we can get them so um, you know good, good, good luck to them. Um, so by the, the sort of end of next year nearly a third of the workforce will be from that generation um, and it's noticeable that things like values and diverse inclusive environments and things like that are definitely more in demand than they were uh, previously and perhaps you know if we're comparing this to 2019 I think that that trend has definitely uh, come through this through the system um, I think the key is flexibility so I think uh, Candidates are looking for greater flexibility. Employees are looking for greater flexibility. I think businesses probably need to think more flexibly about how they <laughs> deliver that flexibility, if, 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 if you get what I mean. Um, so I think um, being aware and being flexible are the ways of trying to solve this. If salaries are going up but they can't go up forever, if there's a natural limit to how far salaries can go, then clearly finding other ways to satisfy that need and, 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 and those demands has to be the challenge that's kind of put in front of you because you can't just keep paying people more and more forever I wouldn't imagine so it is a little bit time for um, creative thinking so what could this look like um, 
So in terms of uh, top demands from Generation Z, this is uh, what, what, what we've seen. Um, I would imagine there's a degree here in brackets, if you can't keep paying me more, then dot, 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 because I would imagine that, that that would be their top demand. Yeah, pay me a bit more. But some of these things here are looking at that kind of more flexible, um, if, if, if that isn't an option, what else might be? And things like flexible hours, um, uh, working from home more. You know, there's definitely some things here that have started to be propagated more by what's happened in the last few years, but clearly um, still some demand from uh, the candidates. And I think that's the one thing that clearly has come through the pandemic is we, we are all able to quite comfortably work from home and, and, and be very, very proficient at doing it. And so is it work from home? Is it uh, hybrid? Is it remote? You know, I, th I think there's still a lot of questions about this. Interestingly, even at the start of this year, some sectors we've seen, um, admin and teaching especially, had 14 and 12 percent more jobs with reference to remote working than the back end of last year, which to me seems awfully late in the day to be growing the number of references to that kind of work in your adverts this long after COVID. But I guess the, the, the lesson from this is different industries have different needs and requirements and move at different paces. And so I think if you're all, I, I guess for me, that the, the, the outcome is if you're all still tackling the hybrid remote working styles challenge, I think everyone still is. You're, you're not behind. You're not the only ones. I think everyone is still wrestling with it a bit. And there is no one size fits all answer. It has to slightly uh, depend on what you need and, and, and what the candidate's job is, right? So, so I think that's, that's, to me, feels like a challenge that is now live and sort of will never go away. It will always be a little bit of a, uh, a bone of contention or, or, or an unsolved uh, challenge because I don't think there is one right answer that you could say that that's how things should work. So um, think definitely there are there are industries still wrestling with that and trying to come up with a, an appropriate solution. Um, just looking at some of those other benefits uh, that we've that we flagged up that people were asking for. So with a lot of these graphs, so this is this is kind of references to certain terms in jobs and just how they've fluctuated over the last few years. I think to a degree, a bit like we saw the, the, the original graph with the job numbers, to a degree, the noise in 2020 and 2021 can be a little misleading. I think the interesting thing is where we are now and where we started in 2019, and perhaps when these topics became relevant and could be in reaction to obviously a huge change in, in, in working practices in the middle of 2020. But I think it's where we are now and where we started that might be the more interesting long-term uh, trend. So uh, flexible work now clearly uh, you know, far more um, uh, prevalent in terms of uh, uh, how it's being referred to in job ads than it, than it was previously. Um, retention bonuses had a had a year in the in the um, uh, in the spotlight. I think just after COVID, when everyone was worried that and and rightly so that lots of uh, lots of uh, employees were going to move on and and, and sort of uh, take uh, take other offers. So the retention bonus became a a, a, a bit of a an overnight sensation. But that that definitely, from what we're seeing on job ads, is has died back almost to where it was before. It isn't something that's um, uh, uh, become a staple of. of every job ad in quite the way it was during 2021. Um, uh, maternity, paternity leave, um, definitely in the last couple of years, that now seems to have become a much more uh, prevalent term that people are offering and, and is being talked about and, and, and demanded by uh, candidates. So I think that's quite interesting. Again, that might be just to do with uh, candidates' expectations of, well, if I'm going to be working remotely and what have you, I expect to be able to fit my life and work in, in a way that I've become accustomed to since, since February 2020. And the four-day week, so this is one that we've definitely started to pick up on a bit more well, we're nearly halfway through the year, but the start of this year, references to the four-day week, nine-day fortnight, slightly less, but the four-day week is uh, a term that is being used much more prevalently. So I again, it, it's one of those things you're going to have to tackle and wrestle with yourself, and does it work for your style of business and, and, and the way that people uh, need to do their jobs with you? But I think um, that's definitely one that should be on the, on, on the radar very, very clearly. And then these are the, the other sort of general benefits. I always think free massages and happy hours, uh, they're nice. Um, but you know, most people probably say, I'll, I'll take another grand on my pay if you, if you want to, and I can go to my own yoga classes. But um, these sorts of things are clearly, they are still being uh, included. Um, I, I, I wonder if you know, it, it might be, you, companies need to think a little bit more about some of these things just to kind of keep beefing up that offering and keeping the candidates um, interested. 
Um, final group, just to, just to sort of look at and pull out, I said, you know, Generation Z is kind of interesting just to look at because they're becoming uh, a, a greater part of the workforce. The same with LGBTQ+. Um, they're, they're, they tend to be more at the younger end of the spectrum. So again, it's, it's, it's a group of people that are going to move through the cohort in the years to come. So making sure that um, uh, the, the appeal to them and, and the way that values are expressed is appropriate, I think is something that needs to be very clearly on the radar. Um, fewer than half uh, of, of businesses have family policies uh, that equally apply to these people. So that's definitely something that should be, again, on the radar. Is it something you need to be uh, tackling? And uh, overall, um, the average take-home pay is less for these people than it is for their heterosexual uh, uh, counterparts. Sorry. Um, which leads me then on to... We, at uh, the back end of last year, uh, you may have uh, come across this, we did a bit of um, sort of uh, consumer branded advertising and promotion and we, we lobbied the UK government to make salaries mandatory on job descriptions as part of trying to, um, you know, p push the, uh, the transparency uh, angle a lot more, partly because only, well, just under half of all jobs include a salary, which we, we know doesn't really work from our point of view as a, as a promoter of jobs. That's not a great thing because the first thing most people want to know, what am I going to get paid? It, it does vary by industry. Some industries are pretty good, some, some less so. But I mean, if we're talking about values and trying to attract candidates in a difficult market, the bottom line is the first thing most candidates want. I mean, I'm surprised it's as little as 31%. I would have thought it would have been more. But the first thing most candidates want to know is what, what are you going to pay me for coming in and doing the job you want me to do? Um, and from a purely kind of our advertising point of view, we know that you will get twice as much initial interest, but six times as many applications. And, you know, the candidates, it, it, it's what they're looking for. So from our point of view, and I know it's not an easy one, it might be something that needs talking about today and when you get back and it's not as easy just splashing the numbers up and getting on with it there's there's things to consider but there, there's a very strong case both from the candidate and from the promotional side to say salary transparency really is something that i think needs to be uh pushed even harder a couple of last things um chat gpt is better than you um it, it sort of is in in many ways um i felt we couldn't uh, have a presentation in May of 2023 and not refer to ChatGPT. Um, when we did this one back in February, it, it still felt like a bit of a kind of, I oh, will put it in there, and, you know, even in the last two months, the amount of talk and awareness and, and, and people you know, catching on to this has ballooned. Um, so ChatGPT is better than you, but it's better than you at, I think, certain tasks, and they're probably the kind of slightly, I guess, repetitive and, and, and um, uh, um, uh, common tasks that you may have ended up taking up quite a lot of your time, but aren't actually massive value adds. So things like job descriptions and writing emails out to candidates or keeping your talent pools warm, things like this that have a value, but probably don't need a full day of a human being's time, you could probably put something like that in and, and and get an answer that is 99 to maybe 150 percent as good as what you could do very quickly and and saves you time and 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 effort and then really sort of all the way through the process there are um, implications we, we are not i am not here today uh here to sort of extol the virtue all, all i can tell you is it's definitely something that you all need to be talking and thinking about it may be people further down the um the, the, the pipeline that are able to offer more value or you're able to get more value but i just felt we couldn't really go through this presentation without flagging it up and saying it's definitely something that you need to be um, on top of um so this was an example we we we, we ran a a blog where we basically asked uh, chat GPT to create a list of questions for, for a CFO just to see how it worked. We felt that the questions that came out pretty good to be honest um we also just to just to bear in mind candidates also have access to chat gpt so beware that your robot might be talking to their robot which might not be the best way of assessing whether someone is the right uh, employee for you unless of course it's for one of your jobs working with the chatbots and what have you anyway um do, just be aware that um you know <laughs> both sides uh, have access to this so you might need to start thinking about how do we try and make sure that what we're getting is an answer from someone that is their answer as opposed to something that they've been able to check through anyway um, hopefully flagged that one up uh, as a as a potential issue so the bottom line you're just going to have to work harder sorry about that um, we've, we've, we've we've put the numbers through we've had a good look we've we've checked it through you are just going to have to work harder um, basically I think you know it is a bit 
everything everywhere all at once at the moment but you will be expected i think to to do more with less uh this, they're very tough conditions you've got um you know candidates that your, your competitors are all getting stronger there's more and more resources you've got to do it faster better you've probably got to get a better retention rate it's all it's all happening um i think the the key to it is you've you've almost got to try and be an expert at everything which by definition is impossible right but you've got to at least give the passable impression of being able to have sort of expert level knowledge at a range of different things most of which aren't actually hiring people but bad luck um, it's, it's all the things that kind of go around it um, so I think what you've got to try and do and that's why I put the, um, the, the pipeline up at the start I think you need to use the fact there are people dotted through that pipeline suppliers like ourselves who have expertise in, in, in some quite defined areas and I think you need to select carefully which people you work with and what expertise you can you can be grabbing from their brain to help your unique uh, set of recruitment circumstances you, you just you can't be an expert at all this stuff that's changing day in day out so you've got to be a little bit of a magpie and you've got to kind of go and grab it from where you can um, so for example um, we, we uh, explained at the start that obviously um, salaries are, are kind of up but job numbers have been down over the last uh, 12, 12 months or so so on the far side is that view so uh, the jobs are down uh, overall in the last year about 17 percent salaries up about seven that's great my mum could probably probably just about guess that because she kind of like you know watches the telly and stuff but for you in your roles clearly that that overall uk figure it doesn't doesn't really help it's nice to know but it doesn't really help because you're not recruiting for the whole of the uk all at once you're recruiting in your specific areas so even when we burrow down to you know particular high volume roles the difference let's say between you know hospitality and catering where actually job numbers have held up pretty well and salaries have gone up compared to logistics where the job numbers have fallen through the floor and the salaries are virtually where they were if your main job is hiring in one of those two you, you need to have a completely different mindset on what the challenges are in that sector at the moment so our kind of re response to that really is we've got all this data we see a million jobs plus at any one time we can dive down into particular segments particular locations particular time frames and be able to give you a little bit of insight into what is happening at the sort of salary and job level so for let's we took customer service because it's kind of role that lots of people can kind of relate to um, last year the salaries this was pretty much what happened across the uk last year this, this sort of pattern salaries going up through the year a couple of jumps job numbers went up and sort of stayed there-ish dipped off a bit at the end that was kind of uh, reasonably representative of the market however if you went to something like warehouse roles there was a very different model and if you're mainly hiring for kind of warehouse roles i think you need to be aware of what's going on with those salaries and those locations sorry salaries and, and, and job numbers rather than the uk one and then if we take warehouse just to birmingham again that that pattern becomes even more pronounced um in in a particular location um as obviously you know there, there's a variety of very local issues or pressures that are, that are forcing salaries or job numbers and if you're trying to build a distribution center on the outskirts of birmingham this is what you kind of need to know rather than the overall uk picture because that's probably not going to help you so um on the tables we've got uh, an example of our core uh, core role monthly reports uh, we've started to do these it's a snapshot we do it on about the second of each month and we look at the previous month for major roles customer service retail drivers those sorts of things and we basically uh, we just look at what's happening to the salaries and the locations and the geographies of where these roles are prominent so you can get a quick snapshot potentially use that internally up the line to explain what's happening nationwide what we um, would sorry what we would love to do is if you had a particular campaign or set of jobs that you want us to burrow down into we can go away and do that and come back and give you a sort of bespoke report this is a general nationwide one we can do it a little bit more uh, nuanced for you if you were interested in that and there's someone on every table you can have that conversation with um so overall um just to sort of sum up and potentially set the tone for you know where we go from here it feels like you know, there was a historically um significant boom or bust that, that went on we have to all know that it feels like we're we're kind of out of that uh, that spell um there is still some unusual volatility um and but but trends are starting to come in that look like they might be now set perhaps for the rest of the year <laughs> God, what have i said but anyway it feels like that you know there, there might be some stability candidates expectations have definitely changed um 
uh, they're not just looking for more money. I suspect they probably are because cost of living, we, you know, we, we could all do with that. But it, it is also around work life and values and fairness. It's not just money. I think you, you need to be able to find some sort of expert level help in the areas where you've got challenges because you can't do it all on your own. And you're just going to have to be, you know, yet again for the what nth year on the trot you're going to have to be quicker and more efficient and more flexible and and, and kind of use all the things that are your that are at your disposal um so i think that's hopefully given you a bit of a picture of what we're seeing in the market and and, and with any luck tease things up for the rest of the morning um we'll send around tomorrow some links to some of those blogs that i've referred to uh, a copy of the job reports and if you did want any bespoke analysis um get in touch with us um We'd love to work with you on cost application campaigns, but that wasn't really the point of being here today, but we'd love to talk about them if you would. Thank you very much.